Hey guys, Amber here. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I made these beautiful summer wreaths and there is a lot to do. So we are going to jump right in right now. Okay guys, for this first wreath, we're going to take the square wreath frame that I got from the Dollar Tree before it was $1.25. I'm just saying I only paid a buck for this wreath frame. And we're going to add these 12 pipe cleaners to the wreath frame, guys. Just a little twist in on all of these like crossbar parts that are in the center. And then I also add one pipe cleaner to each of the four corners, making the total for this particular wreath frame be 12. So once I have all of the uh, pipe cleaners added, we're ready to add some deco mesh. So I got this deco mesh here at Goodwill, guys. I only paid like a dollar so or two something for it. I don't know. It was a really good deal. And guys, it's a really good mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just gathering the mesh at the very, very end. Then I'm going to take the mesh and put it in one of the center parts. Just pick one. It doesn't matter. Just don't start on a corner. I wouldn't suggest starting on a corner. I'm going to take a zip tie and I'm going to zip tie it to the frame. I always like to take my starting piece and zip tie it just to make sure that it's extra secure. This is not not necessary, but it's something that I like to do just to make sure everything stays in place. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut off my excess. I couldn't find my wire cutters, which is what I usually use for that. But you know, whatever. We're going to make do with some scissors. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some poofs all the way around the wreath frame, guys. I can't tell you how big I make my poofs because I just do it to my liking. I'm like, okay, that looks good. And then I go all the way around. So I don't measure anything. I go all the way around one time doing this method. And then I go around a second time. This is me finishing up the second time around and this is what it looks like nice and full and pretty so we're getting there guys I'm really liking this I I liked this mesh better than I thought I would so next we're going to take this lime green mesh and we're going to cut it at 20 inches so I'm going to take a pair of scissors just to keep it in place there so it doesn't roll off while I'm doing this and then I'm going to take my rotary tool here and I'm going to cut at 20 inches so I'm going to cut 12 pieces because we have 12 pipe cleaners in the wreath frame, I'm going to cut 12 pieces. So the method that I'm going to use for this first one is where you curl the mesh in on each end, and then I'm just going to flip it over, and then I'm just going to walk it into itself. Guys, this doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I just, you know, did that really quickly and very, don't, don't spend too much time on it, okay? It's really not worth it. Then once you're done doing that, just go ahead and plop it in there. Just give your little pipe cleaner a couple of twists, and boom, there you go. I'm going to do that all the way around the wreath frame, and once I've done that, this is what it looks like. So the next thing that I want to add is my sign. I got this really cute, happy summer watermelon sign from my Diva Bag by Sonia bag last summer. So I'm going to go ahead and use that in this wreath. I thought it would be really cute. So I'm going to take a couple of pipe cleaners and replace the ribbon that was used to hang the sign up with some pipe cleaners so that I can attach it to this wreath frame. So I'm just going to go ahead, give it some twists, make sure it's nice and secure on each side here. And then I'm going to take these pipe cleaners and I'm going to feed it through the uh, wire part of the frame. So I'm looking for that wire part of the frame. I found it, so just feed it through. And then just, I don't know guys how to explain this. Once you feed it through, you're gonna flip your um, wreath frame over so that you can see where you're tying it to. Now you're gonna see me tie it to the wreath frame and then I'm gonna flip it back over and it was a little bit too tight. So I suggest not putting it fully in place at first, just give it a couple of twists, see what it looks like, and then go back and adjust it accordingly if you need to. That was the only adjustment that I needed to make, but then I also decided I wanted to put one at the very bottom of this sign because I thought it would flop around and look really weird. So so I'm just going to do that by adding some glue. So I'm just going to add some hot glue to the bottom of the sign here and plop that little Chanel stem right down on there. Now I would suggest using one of those protective finger things when you do things like this. You're going to see me get one later because it does burn your hands. So I'm just going to take a little piece of um, scrap ribbon here and I'm going to put it over top of this because I don't want to sit and wait for it to flood. Look, I got my little finger thing and this little finger thing is great for doing things like this so that you don't burn your fingers. After I make sure that everything is attached and nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut off my excess. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with this piece here and just feed it through the wreath frame. This is just going to make the sign more secure and make it so that it doesn't flop around all over the place on your wreath. I do make these to sell, so of course I would not want that to happen. Now that everything's nice and secure with the sign, we're going to go ahead and make some ribbon tails to add into the wreath frame. So I'm going to use this 12-inch ribbon tail measurer thingamabobber that I found on Etsy. This one's acrylic, but guys, you don't need this tool. You absolutely do not need this tool. You could use cardboard that you cut at 12 inches, or you can just simply measure 12 inches on a ruler and cut 
each piece individually. Whatever you want to do. I like using this because normally the ribbon slides right off here is super easy, but somehow I got caught at the end here and I was having a little bit of trouble. But normally this tool is very, very useful for me. So I just go ahead, slip it off of there, cut all my slits, count my pieces, make sure that I have 12 because I want to make sure I have 12 pieces for each style ribbon. I'm going to do the exact same thing with this lime green ribbon. So once I have all of my ribbon cut, I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail the end. So you just simply fold it in half and then cut upward, upwards, upwards, <laughs> upwards, and that will give you a nice dovetail. I'll show you one more time. So you fold the ribbon in half, cut upwards, and that gives you a nice little dovetail there. I'm gonna do that with all of these pieces. So there's a total of 24. Once I've done all of my dovetails, I'm gonna go ahead and pair uh, the pieces together because they're gonna go on the wreath frame together and fold them in half. This just helps me um, so that it's easy to find the center of these ribbon tails for when I'm adding them to the wreath frame. So now I'm going to go ahead and take one of those pairings that I have accordion folded in that center line that I have creased down and I'm going to plop it into one of the Chanel stems. So I'm going to do this method all the way around the wreath frame with all 12 of those Chanel stems. So I'm just going to fluff it out and then move on to the next one and do the exact same thing guys. This process is so easy. Literally anyone can do this. I promise you. So once I have all of those ribbon tails added in, we're ready to move on to the next part. So I don't like that you can um, see some of that Chanel stem that's on the sign there. So what I'm gonna do is just tack it down with some hot glue and then you can see a big clump fell off of my, my uh, glue gun there. Awesome, just make sure you take that out of there if something like that happens. And then I'm just gonna hold it in place until that's nice and secure and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side because I just don't want there to be any chance that you'll be able to see those Chanel stems that are on the sign holding the sign in place. I just don't think that it looks good and it takes away from the overall design. So now that I have that done, I made this bow off camera and I'm just going to attach it with these Chanel stems. So I'm just gonna find the right place. I thought that I wanted it there, then realized it was too low, so I moved it up higher. That was the right place. And I'm just going to attach it to the wreath frame as you've seen me do with the sign and everything else. Once that's done, this wreath is pretty much done, guys. I'm just gonna add a hanger here and I have this, I think it's 16 inch gauge wire. I'm just gonna fold this wire down and this is what's going to be the hanger for this wreath. Now I do add backs to all of my wreaths because I wanna make sure that none of the, um, like the pipe cleaners or anything, scratch anybody's door. You won't see that on camera, but I do add it back to all of my wreath frames here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side here. And then I realized I put the one hook on the wrong side. I put it on the outside and it should be on the inside so that this stays in place in that center part there for you to be able to hang it on your door. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that small correction, just bend this wire back and put it in the correct place and then bend it where I need it to be. And that's gonna be what you use to hang up this wreath, guys. After that, it's done and here it is. It's so pretty, I love it. I think it turned out super, super cute. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the next one and I attached these red Chanel stems to this uh, wreath frame already and we're gonna use this red and white, um, this is 20, inch deco mesh and guys this is a really good deco mesh this came from trendy tree and i gotta say they got some really high quality deco mesh there because when i put this around this wreath frame twice it made this wreath so incredibly full i mean incredibly full so the quality of mesh that you get guys really does make a difference so just keep that in mind when you're buying things you can totally get one and make a nice looking wreath from the dollar tree but i'm just saying if you get higher quality mesh you get a higher quality look Okay, now that I'm done with that one, I'm gonna do the same thing with this yellow um, mesh that I did with that lime green mesh. I'm gonna cut it at 20 inches and I'm going to cut 12 pieces because I'm using the same square wreath frame I used in the first DIY. But I'm gonna do a little bit of a different method here as you can see with the deco mesh. I'm just going to put fold both of the pieces in, put them kind of overlapping each other and then flip it the other way around and then walk it into itself. When you do it this way, you have zero, and I mean zero fray. I love this method. This is the method that I'm going to use probably all the time now. And I did discover this method on my own. However, I know that there's people out there who have done this method and, you know, say they created it or whatever, but I didn't see it from them. I just want to point that out. I just was working with the mesh, found this out on my own. It is what it is. Now we're going to take this awesome ribbon and and this lemonade um, thingamabobber, I don't know. I got this in my Trendy Tree um, mystery box. And I think it is so super cute. And it's going to be perfect for this wreath. And actually was the inspiration for this wreath. So the first thing that I want to do is create a nice big bow. Because that little lemonade centerpiece isn't quite big enough. So to do that, I'm going to take these pieces of ribbon that I cut 
14 inches long and dovetailed them and I'm going to plop four of the strawberry design and four of the polka dot design in rotating ways. Obviously I'll do a polka dot then a strawberry, polka dot and do a strawberry into this little bow maker. Okay so I'm just simply accordion folding, a quarter, mm -hmm, accordion folding. I can talk. I really can. These pieces into my little bow maker here. Once I have all of the pieces in, I'm going to remove them and add a zip tie. Okay. So this is just the first part of this particular kind of bow that I like to do. So I'm going to go ahead, secure that zip tie nice and tight, cut off my excess, and we're going to set that part aside. And then we're going to do the exact same process that you saw me do with these eight pieces with the remaining eight pieces that I have cut here. So I cut a total of 16 pieces at 14 inches each, and then I grouped them in two bundles of eight. I hope that'll make sense, but you guys can totally see what I'm doing in the video here. So once I have my second bundle together, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie that one together as well. Now what I should have done with one of these bundles is added the Chanel stem, but I forgot to do that, but it's totally fine. You're gonna see me do that in a later step and we'll just glue it on because I forgot to include the Chanel stem, but it'll be easier if you zip tied it in. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and glue one of the bundles on top of the other bundle in the opposite direction. So you can see this one's going horizontal, so I'm gonna glue this one on vertical so that it makes a nice nice, big, thick, full bow. Now, like I said, I totally should have put my Chanel stems in um, from the jump, but I didn't do that. So I'm going to join two of them together because I feel that one isn't going to be long enough to attach it to the wreath frame. So that's why I'm joining two of them together. And I'm going to attach them with glue because I should, because <laughs> I didn't attach them the first time like I should have in the zip tie, but I need to get over that and just accept the fact that I have to glue them on. So I'm going to glue one on horizontally and then I'm going to glue the second one on vertically so that they're going like in four different directions for me to be able to attach it to the square wreath frame. So once I have those on nice and secure, I'm going to flood it too, just to make sure that they're super secure and that the Chanel stems aren't going anywhere. So now that everything's nice and dry, you can see me tugging on it. It's all good, nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and attach this bow to the center part of the wreath because we're going to put that little lemonade piece on top of this bow. How cute is that? Ah, I love it. It just gives it such a bigger kind of a punch, right? I just love this. Okay. Anyways, once I have my lemonade piece on there, um, we're going to go ahead and let that dry. And while it's drying, we're going to add in my 12 inch ribbon uh, tails. So we're going to do the same thing that you saw me do in the first wreath and just add these 12 inch ribbon tails all the way around the wreath frame. So there are um, 12 sets of these ribbon tails. Once that's done, this is what it looks like. We're going to go ahead. Now that, that everything's dry, the lemonade piece is dry in there, we're going to plop that right in the center. Look at that. So nice and full. So pretty. I know this is busy, guys, but I like busy. I think busy is very fun. So we're going to attach this to the wreath frame as you've seen me do before. Now, because this is sitting up so high off the wreath frame, I'm going to add in some scrap deco mesh. Don't throw any away any of your ends of deco mesh, guys, because there can always be a use for it in a future DIY. So this one, I'm just going to plop all of these um, scrap deco mesh in there to give that wreath um, or give that centerpiece a cushion to lay on because I don't want it sinking into the wreath. How unattractive would that be? Somebody buys a wreath and then they hang it on their door and then their centerpiece sinks in. That would be terrible. So this is why we're adding in the scrap deco mesh and then I'm just securing it with pipe cleaners going in opposite directions to make sure that that deco mesh stays where I want it to stay. And then it provides a nice pillow for my little sign that I added. Well, sign bow attachment. So now I'm going to, you're going to see me push it in a little bit just to show you guys it's going to stay exactly where I want it to stay. Perfect solution for this. Always hang on to that scrap deck I mesh. I'm just saying. Okay, now I have these super cute strawberries that I've had forever. I found them at a yard sale. They got a little box of them for 50 cents. And these are so perfect for this DIY. Once I have the strawberries, guys, it's done. And look at how beautiful it is. I love this one. Love, 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 love this one. It is so pretty. Okay, so with this last wreath, we're going to go ahead and just add my Chanel stems like you see me do before. And then I was just going to show you like, boom, we're going to add the deco mesh all the way around. Boom. But then it hit me. I should show you guys how I did that because I didn't do it 
it the way that you guys saw me do it before. This time I cut the 20 inch pieces and then I folded the mesh into itself and like over did the whole overlap method for that zero fray look. And I'm just going to plop these pieces in to all of the Chanel stems. So this is a little bit of a different method and it's considered a pancake wreath when you do it in this fashion. So that is what I'm going for here because I'm going to be using a lot of scrap deco mesh that I have left over on some rolls. And this is just a great way to utilize that deco mesh. Okay. So we're going to go all the way around doing this method for the base of my wreath here. And then you're going to see me bring in some multiple different colors. So we have pink, we have blue, and we have lime. Trust the process, guys. There is a method to this madness, right? So there's just a little bit left on each of these rolls. So what I'm going to do is cut 20 inch pieces and I don't know how many pieces I'm going to get. I have no idea. We're just going to cut the 20 inch pieces and see where that leaves me because I had no idea what was going to happen here. I didn't know how much mesh was left over on each roll, right? So I ended up with four of the pink pieces. So my first thought is to go ahead and add these pink pieces into the wreath frame in all four corners okay because there was four pink pieces so after I do that um, I'm just going to do the same method that you saw me do with the yellow ribbon I'm going to plop it in there but I'm going to plop it in the opposite direction so see how that one's going vertical so then I'm going to put this one in horizontal hopefully that makes sense but I do that process all the way around the wreath frame and then I'm going to go ahead and add in I only had two blue guys two that's all I got out of that roll was two blue so we're going to add one here and then we're going to add one in the um opposite direction of the wreath there and then we're just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of it with this lime green because this is what I call a scrap wreath we're using the scraps to fill in the rest of the wreath right okay so after I do all that this is what it's looking like not too bad right I think it's kind of a fun color palette there so I have this welcome sign that I got in my trendy tree mystery box and we're going to add this as the centerpiece but I don't want this um what is that thing called a rope hanger. Yes. On there, we're going to attach it to the wreath frame with these uh, pipe cleaners, as you've seen me do many times. So we're just going to simply attach these pipe cleaners to the back of this sign using hot glue. Now I would use a staple gun, but I'm afraid that it's going to go through to the other side of this wood. So I don't want to take that chance. So that's why we're just going to use some hot glue. Okay. So here was my inspiration for this design, guys, this, um, this ribbon that you see right here. That's where I got all of the colors. Now I'm just going to heat seal the ends of this ribbon because this ribbon here will definitely fray in the design so I wanted to make sure I heat sealed the ends. I did these pairings just as you see me do many times throughout this whole video. These are 12 inch pieces that I'm adding into this wreath frame. Exact same process as you've seen me do the entire video. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and add these in rotating fashion. I have two different designs here because I'm using all of my scraps. This is what I call a scrap wreath. All right. Once I've added in all the ribbon tails, we're going to add the sign into the center here. So I'm just going to do like you've seen me do throughout this entire video. How many times am I going to say that? I don't know, but we're going to attach it to the wreath frame. Okay. So once that's done, I'm going to cut off my excess uh, pipe cleaner for this one because I don't want you to see the pipe cleaner with the next step that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and add some really pretty florals into this. So I have this pink and yellow floral that I'm going to, um, they're daisies that I'm going to add into this uh, wreath design here. So I'm just going to do them in a rotating fashion. So I lay them out the way that I think that I want them to look after I'm happy with that. We're going to go ahead, take the hot glue gun, and we're going to attach each of these pieces. I just cut off the little bit of the excess that's sticking out there, put some hot glue on it and plop it down. Once you do that, guys, this wreath is done. And here's the final thing. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And all three of these wreaths are available in my Etsy store. Make sure that you jump over there and check that out. And I will see you guys in my next video.